Now, in this question, uh, you had to make up a solution. Uh, so, you want to make 171.2 millimolar sodium chloride solution and you have 200 milliliters and this is the molecular mass. So, how much do you have to weigh in? Uh, we can do that with dimensional analysis. So, we have grams, 58.44 gram per mole. So we want to have the grams, uh, we want to cancel out the mole, so we have 171.2 uh, times 10 to the minus 3 mole per litre, and we have 200 milliliter, and I write this as 0 0.2 litres, so that uh, all cancels out. And if we do this calculation, we shall get exactly 2.0 gram of sodium chloride. Now, we also want to make up 0.5% yeast extract. Now, we know that 0.5% weight per volume is the same as 0.5 gram per 100 milliliter and we want to have 200 milliliters so 200 we times it by 200 milliliters cancel out the 100 so we want to have one gram of yeast extract and we do exactly the same for the triptone one percent triptone is the same as one gram per 100 milliliter Again, we want to have 200 milliliter, so that cancels out the 100 goes, and therefore we want to have 2, two gram of the triptone. Now, for the next question, we want to demonstrate that this follows a first order kinetics, and therefore we have to uh, convert our data here, our absorbance here, we have to all take this ln of this, ln of this, and so on and so forth. And uh, that's very important. So when we do that, we get the ln of absorbance. Please note, there is no unit here, no unit, that's very important. And we have our axis going from the smallest negative number to the largest negative number. Some people have drawn that in a, exactly the opposite way. Um, so they've, uh, for example, uh, they, they, they did some weird things and eventually what it looked like was something like that. Now this is typical if you have a decay. So, for example, radioactive uh, decay or consumption. A growth curve would always need to go upwards. So, that's characteristic of a growth curve. Decay goes down, growth goes up. You, of course, need to have proper axis labels, so time uh, in minute. And wherever I saw something like that, uh, I deducted some marks because um, it is just simply the, the, the order of the axis uh, was in the wrong position. Now, all you really needed to say is that it is a straight line and therefore it must be a first order reaction. If you have drawn an absorbance uh, versus time graph, you didn't get any marks because that doesn't tell you anything that uh, whether it's a first order reaction or not. Now for the next question you were asked uh, to calculate the rate constant of uh, the data here and uh, you needed really the uh, first order uh, equation for that. So for example uh, you could write ln a final over a initial equals. Now, be careful here. This is a plus because we have got a growth. A lot of people put a minus in and they got completely confused. No, this is growth here. 
and t final minus t initial. And all we need to do is just use some uh, values for a final. Let's say we use a final, we use this one here uh, equals 0 0.12 and the corresponding t final would be 90 minutes and the a initial, let's say we take this one here, that would be 0 0.01 and the t initial would be 0 minutes. So all we need to do is uh, we can plug that in and we bring that to the other side here. So we have ln of 0 0.12 divided by 0 0.01 uh, and divided by t final, that's 90 minus 0 minutes and that gives us the k. And um, when we uh, calculate that, so that gives us ln12, ln12 divided by 90, and that gives us uh, roughly 0 0.028, and the unit for that is minute to the minus 1. So that's quite important here. That is our our rate constant. We also know that we can convert a rate constant into a half-life and we know or a doubling time so we know that for the doubling time this is uh, ln2 divided by k so all we need to uh, put in this number here we get the doubling time equals 0 0.693 divided by 0. 028 minute to the minus 1 and that gives us roughly a doubling time of 25 minutes. Again be careful with the unit it has to be minutes here and minutes, minutes to the minus 1 here. Without the right units a number is just simply a number it doesn't uh, say anything really. And finally, um, we can uh, address the last question. Uh, after what time do we get an absorbance of this one here? So all we need to say is our A final equals 0 0.4. The T final, that is what we are looking for our k equals 0 0.028 minutes to the minus 1. Our a initial equals 0 0.01. t initial is 0 minutes. And what we need to do is ln a final over a initial equals k times t final minus t initial and that is zero and in order to get this t final we bring the k to this side and we have ln a final 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.028 minutes to the minus one and uh, if you do uh, this calculation you will get roughly 132 minutes and again you need to have the uh, right unit so i hope this makes sense and thank you for watching